Okay, here we go. Some more Genshin Impact. We've got quite a bit of free time since at work. We got a little over a week of days off, so I've been able to play this game enough that now I've, I've actually got all of my quests done. So that gives me an opportunity to find out what do you do in this game long term? Because there is this resin system and there's been quite a bit of comments about the resin system because this is a gacha game. You need it to do a lot of the things that will net you resources like these books here to level up skills. And there's also bosses that'll drop rare items and other types of bosses there. These give you money. These ley lines give you EXP. You see over here, this is weapon upgrade materials. So there's a fair bit that you need for that. And either you spend money to gain that back or you just find something else to do. And I did do a little bit of digging around. I marked a whole bunch of these with these little monster head skulls because that's um, one long continuous farm route that I sometimes will do. I do it about maybe once a day. And that way you get your monster materials. So there, there is some stuff to do regularly, but generally what I find is that you just kind of pick an area and you spend a bit of time wandering around. You gather up resources. Because eventually you do need quite a bit. Um, I know when it comes to the materials that I have, I actually ran really low on these arrowheads and I need a lot of them to upgrade one of my characters. With some of these I actually have lots, like these chaos cores, I have lots of them. Um, I do need to farm more of these hunters and some of these I definitely have loads of I don't really need a lot more but they're along the farm route so depending on that you kind of roam waiting for some content so it, it's at least it's at least an hour's worth of content a day maybe more if you spend a little more time roaming which isn't too bad for basically a free-to-play game that's actually pretty pretty okay I know some people are freaking out and losing their minds and they're being like oh my god I want to play 12 hours of content and it's like yeah but they hard cap you with these uh with this resin stuff but you can do for example there is where is it over here the spiral abyss and in the spiral abyss it gets a lot more trickier I'll go see how well because recently I tried setting up because you need a second party for spiral abyss and I recently started trying to round out let's see last save progress hmm I, need, I think I need to do my, um, I think I need to redo my, because I need two parties, right? And I've been, for the most part, set up with main my main four characters while I roam around the world. But then when you get through to this spiral abyss, you start to say, oh, I need eight people that can actually do, do well, because it can get pretty challenging in, in abyss. So I just got to that stage. And so I ran around and I gathered up resources to try to round out a team of eight people. <clears throat> so one of my main DPS characters is Faisal here. And she pairs really well with Jian Ling. And I've also been leveling up Mona, who is a pretty good taunt character, right? She's got a very strong taunt and she can use that to kind of help her tank in a way. And she can just draw attention away from herself. And she has an item on her that lets her heal when she spams her, her ultimate ability. So 
I only have like one other healer that I've invested in. Noelle here is sort of a healer, but I haven't really invested in her for quite a while. So I think for a team, for sure I would want these three in one team. And then on another one, I can go for like that character, that character, maybe the MC, and I think that would be pretty okay, because Bido here is more of a tank greatsword character, whereas Razor is a very offensive greatsword character, and I think he would be a good character in a separate group because I would have Faisal doing most of my DPS in this group Baido as as a tank in a case, in case I need a tank for something and I have a lot of electric characters I, I am very short on ice characters this is the only ice guy and I have not invested in him at all so I think you know what, let's try let's see how well this goes Spiral Abyss. So there will be some elements that I am not going to be very good up against. Uh, let's see. Normal and charged attacks. Sure. My Faisal is built for normal and normal attacks mostly. So let's wait for this to charge up and go. Ice element. Oop, wrong button. I gotta get used to the different buttons. Um, blah, blah, blah. The problem with the ice stuff is that... Barbara is a water element healer, and she is going to make me freeze. And I want to deal with these electric guys here. Ow. to my other buttons for which character is on which number that's throwing me off. I should take care of this guy though. He is going to be ow, and a nuisance to move. Bad. There we go. Now for the second group. This group will have a lot less DPS. Um, Razor will be a DPS. Mona can DPS. She can do a really good debuff with her ultimate, which will help Razor do a lot of DPS. And then I'll just switch over to the other two characters to pop off their skills every now and then. And I think I'll mostly have to be on Mona and Razor for this. So, mostly Mona, I think, for tanking. But, good thing these guys are water. I can break down his shield really well with Mona. was a lot easier. Um, that was easy because they were fire abyssal mages and Mona destroys fire abyssal mages because she tears their shield off. I wasn't, I didn't actually think that 
they were going to be there, I forgot. I only did that floor one other time, and I didn't have Mona for it, so that's a good thing. So let's see. Oh, so this is going to create these pulses of ice. So that's going to make it really hard to use Barbara, because Barbara will make my characters wet, and then this ice is going to freeze me. So, okay, here we go. And do that. Do that. Ow, ow. Let's try to get Zhang Ling healed up before they start doing the, the freezing. Yeah, the freeze is gonna come off. Let's just blast him. Got roundhouse kick there. Throwing stuff at me. Oh, dodge. And there we go. On to the next one. Now, Mona usually, when she does a sprint, she'll like dive underwater. But I think they disabled that in. Looks like they disabled it in Abyssal. So that makes it a little trickier. Um, we're gonna need the heal razor, so let's see. This will heal him a little bit. Let's just. spam the crap out of her ult because she's got really, really high energy recharge. But it's good that she actually can dive underwater for this because she's fast. She's very fast. It's kind of her thing to do a lot of hit and run move around. And blast people. While they're debuffed by her um, ultimate ability. Oh. Ow. Oh, it's ult. Some healing off. Uh, that's right. Q. Boom. There we go. Okay. And I haven't actually done this one. My uh, group was a little too under leveled. My team too, so I wasn't able to clear with very with very much health left over. So. So far, it's okay. Having Mona on that third, on the second team, is helping out a lot. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oops, again, I did the. Uh... Let's try and kill her off before she uses her ability. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. There was only one wave. I was um, I was expecting more than more than one wave there. I guess it was just the one. That's convenient. All right, time for the hard run. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe. Except I can't get close to him when he's uh, like that. Decoy. Floor five done. Crazy. All right. So I think that's a pretty good show of what Spiral Abyss is like, but also a bit about some of the stuff that you can kind of do when you're done farming and roaming around and doing quests. So soon there's going to be another update. They're going to add some more stuff. Sounds like we'll have some more storylines later on, maybe. We'll see. We'll see what the game ends up being like. Um, don't spend too much money on it. I've seen some people just drop ridiculous amounts of money. And I've only put in about $80. And I think so far I've gotten value out of that. That's generally how much how I play Gacha games. As I consider how much value I'm getting. And I compare that based off of, you know, what other games are like. And so far, yeah. I'm, I'm saying that 80 bucks right now will, will last me a while. So that'll be it for this. Take care.